What is going on everybody? Manta Musa here and today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite black female grifter, I mean conservative, Candace Owens or as I like to call her, Candy Girl. The reason I call her Candy Girl is because, well, as you saw from the intro, she had an allergic reaction to Massa Charlie Kirk from TPUSA, Vanilla Lollipop. But anyway, Massa Tucker Carlson borrowed Charlie's bedwinch and presented her to the world on Fox News recently, and as expected, caused the genocide of many brain cells. Maybe I'm being too soft, but anybody who can talk you know, America's woke corporate structure into sending close to $100 million on the basis of that lame rap kind of gets my respect, in a way. She has my respect because she's unapologetic in her approach. She's telling you what she is. She's a Marxist, so Marxists steal money from other people and they enrich themselves <laughs> right. and tell the people that they stole from are poor. And so she has stolen money from other people on the pretext of a lie that is Black Lives Matter. And she's enriched herself yeah. and she's brought four homes. I mean, you have to kind of appreciate the honesty. She's not hiding by any means, you know. And so, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you here. She's a communist through and through, and she's been unbelievably unapologetic in her approach. So Marxists steal money from other people and they enrich themselves right. until the people that they stole from are poor. And so she Marxism, the political and economic theories of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, later developed by their followers to form the basis for the theory and practice of communism. Communism, a political theory derived from Karl Marx advocating class war and leading to a society in which all property is publicly owned and each person works and is paid according to their abilities and needs. So that's pretty much the definition of Marxism, which is essentially communism, okay? It should be noted that in the Marxist manifesto, they talk about disrupting the nuclear family, which isn't good. Marxist theory on family established that the revolutionary ideal for Soviet state and influence state policy concerning family in varying degrees throughout the history of the country. The principles are the nuclear family unit is an economic arrangement structured to maintain the ideological functions of capitalism. The family unit perpetuates class inequality through the transfer of private property through inheritance. Following the abolition of private property, the bourgeois family will cease to exist, and the unions of individuals will become a purely private affair. The Soviet state's first code on marriage and family was written in 1918 and enacted a series of transformative laws designed to bring the Soviet family closer in line with Marxist theory. All right, personally, I don't see how that would be helpful to communism. If anything, disrupting the nuclear family would dismantle communism, and I will explain why. But first, let's get an understanding of how communism works. Basically, what is communism? Most people know what communism is at its most basic level. Simply put, communism is the idea that everyone in a given society receives equal shares of the benefits derived from labor. Communism is designed to allow the poor to rise up and attain financial and social status equal to that of middle class landowners. In order for everyone to achieve equality, wealth is redistributed, remember that word, redistributed, so that the member of the upper class are brought down to the same financial and social level as the middle class. Communism also requires that all means of production be controlled by the state. In other words, no one can own his or her own business or produce his or her own goods because the state owns everything. Okay, so we have an understanding of what communism is. And um, based on that definition, shouldn't traditional nuclear family be a communist wet dream? Like, think about it. Like, it is a family. It's a group of individuals, each providing their own function for an altruistic goal. The father works and provides for the family. He is the breadwinner. The mother does the cooking, cleaning, and minds the kids. She is the homemaker. She maintains the house. The kids are groomed to, to be like their parents. You know, the sons are taught to work. 
most likely the same job as their father, something in labor, um, so that they may provide for their families in the future. And the daughters are taught to cook, clean, and sew, you know, menial housewife duties, and are groomed to marry well, so that they may bear their husbands many children. So, um, these children are raised into adulthood to continue this circle. And all of this is being supported by the father, who, as the breadwinner, rakes in majority of the money that the family shares. The family shares in those benefits, one way or another. But looking into their reasons for breaking up the nuclear family, there doesn't really... There, there doesn't really seem to be any other logical reason other than stopping any inheritance from being obtained, as they believe inheritance is a contributing factor to the inequality. But other than that, there really is no reason to break up the nuclear family. What's strange is in Soviet Russia, the role of Bolshevik woman was to tend to the household, making sure the children were brought in the traditional Soviet way of life. Now, a lot of conservatives have a sort of derangement syndrome when it comes to communism or even systems that even remotely resemble socialism. But when it comes to Marxism, the fact that Marx wants to disrupt the nuclear family really raises red flags in the conservative sphere. Now, conservatives also claim that public schools have been infiltrated by communists. This is false and quite a bizarre statement. If anything, public school teaches kids to be future capitalists. Think about it. Here is the average American kid's, ages 5 to 18's, daily routine. They have to wake up every morning, um, make their way to school, either on foot, bike, car, or public transportation, clock in, because if they're late, they'll be penalized, and work to earn a good grade. Now, let's compare that to an average American adult's daily routine. The average American adult has to wake up every morning, make their way to work on foot, bike, car, or public transportation, clock in because if they're late, you'll, they'll be penalized, and work to earn their paycheck. They're almost identical. The only thing I had to change was work to school and good grades to a paycheck, which are very similar. And that is precisely my point. Many people don't know this, but public school, and I'm not even kidding, public school was literally designed for kids to end up in factory jobs. And that hasn't fundamentally changed. So you can see how technically we were indoctrinated to be dependent on capitalism, to feed the capitalist machine. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. Now, if you check out some of my other content, you'll know that I have heavily criticized Patrice Colors for not giving, or as I like to call her, Patrice Con Colors, get it, for not giving a single cent to the black community. And I denounced the Black Lives Matter, or as I call it, Black Lives Matter organization. And it should be noted that the organization and the sentiment are completely two different things. I still support the sentiment. I still believe police brutality and racism are a problem. Like, I basically stand for what BLM stands for, aside from the Marxism, obviously. But my main problem with Patrice Colors is, you would think that a self-proclaimed Marxist would redistribute funds, remember the word redistribute? Like, remember? Which is the key to communism. But then it hit me. She's not actually a Marxist. Sure, she likes to proclaim she's a Marxist, but she likely does this to seem edgy, cool, rebellious. But I assume she was raised in public school, and like all of us raised in public school, we were taught, and still are taught, to hate communism. Maybe not directly, but subliminally. Now, because of this, most communists aren't actually communists. They're just people who live in a capitalist society who feed the capitalist machine and, yes, even benefit from the goods of capitalism. And the only thing is they believe in communism. And that idea completely, and I mean completely, 
goes over the heads of many conservatives. I would actually encourage you to maybe check out some of the other work that I've done where I've been intense. Tell you what I do, Ash, I go and check out some basic facts about your hero Obama. He's not my hero, I'm a communist, you idiot. You didn't plan any protests against him, did you? Zero protests against Obama. Jesus, you have. So, you saw how difficult that was. And to be clear, I'm absolutely not a Marxist. I don't believe in communism. In fact, I think it's rather problematic. And it has caused many deaths. That's not to say capitalism hasn't caused deaths. But um, I think it's problematic because it does annihilate any form of individuality. Like, I'm more into a mixed market econ- Like, I'm a mixed market economist. But if the problems with socialism were fixed, because, you know, there are many problems with socialism like Venezuela, all these failed socialist states. But if the problems with socialism were fixed, I would call myself a socialist. It's true capitalism has its flaws, but fundamentally, it isn't the worst system in the world and it operates on a free market system. Okay, so we know what Marxism is, but I still have yet to define capitalism. Capitalism, an economic political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by the state. All right, so we've defined it, but now let, let's find out how it works. The basis of capitalism is individualism. The economic system stems from humanistic ideals of 18th century European enlightenment, beliefs that each human being is individually unique and valuable. This mode of thinking was a turning point. Before the enlightenment, governments didn't want to talk about human rights, but in this vision of humanity, a society made up of unique individuals who pursue their individual interests is healthy. It's characterized by progress, spiritual, and worldly wealth and liberty. Individuals are not just free to pursue self-interested goals. They should, they should pursue self-interested goals. Can you guess what I'm going to say? I agree with this 110%. Capitalism is a beacon of individuality and the free market. In fact, America thrived during the early days of hyper-capitalism. However, there is one problematic aspect of this, and that is that capitalism creates a significant gap between the rich and the poor. And that's while the rich are milking what they can from the working class. Even though many people are living paycheck to paycheck because the cost of living has drastically increased, there was once a time where you could buy a brand new car with a minimum wage job. There was once a time where you could buy a home and have a stay-at-home spouse and three kids and one job, one blue-collar job, could actually afford all of that. Those times are long gone. The American dream is dead, and it's been dead. I understand this. It's been dead for the African-American community. It, well, it never rose for them, quite frankly, right? It never really was a true reality for them. And for much of the middle class of those who had the privilege of having that American dream in previous generations, our generations are seeing that that's not possible now. So we're seeing this huge level of angst and anger and just pushback of the establishment, pushback of authoritarianism, pushback of the hyper-police militarized state. That is happening right now amongst, uh, amongst all groups of people. And not only that, the rich can reinvest their capital whilst the poor have to continue to work and spend every penny they have on living costs like food, utility, bills, all of which the rich make profit from. Hmm. It's almost like they're taking money from people, the working class to be specific, to sustain, or a better term would be, enrich themselves. What was Candace's definition of Marxism again? So Marxists steal money from other people and they enrich themselves right. until the people that they stole from are poor. My God, I think I finally get it. Candy wasn't describing Marxism. She was describing capitalism. <laughs> 
And if you paid attention earlier, I gave the definition of Marxism and how it works. It is essentially communism. And the key to communism is what, kids? Remember the word of the day, kids. Redistributing. Now, did you hear anything in what Candace defined as Marxism as redistributing? She talked about taking money from people until they're poor to enrich themselves. So she basically just insulted capitalism. You know, Candace has actually earned my respect. Like, not just, not in a way. She is my full respect. Why, you may ask? Because she has taken her grift to an entirely new level. Like, if you want to learn how to grift, look at this woman right here. Look at this genius right here. Patrice Colors, just like Patrice Colors, Patrice Con Colors, she isn't hiding anymore. She isn't hiding her ignorance anymore. She knows that as long as she spews conservative talking points or sounds like she knows what the fuck she's talking about, she'll keep taking these white conservatives' money. The conservatives told the black community that BLM, the BLM organization was a fraud. And you know what? They were right. They were right. The organization was a fraud. But if I wanted to return the favor, they would call me like jealous, crazy, I'm just mad because she's a black conservative, when in actuality, I am trying to help them get a grifter out of their life. Because a grifter, well, first of all, when you see a grifter, you know a grifter. And grifters are incredibly difficult to get out of your life. Now, we've warned them about Candace Owens, but all those warnings have fallen on deaf ears. This is a woman that says she doesn't believe in climate change, but could not for the life of her explain why. I don't have the clip right here, but it's in the description below because honestly, I've lost enough brain cells just list having to repeat her video over and over and over again. And let's not forget when she uses buzzwords like cultural Marxism, which I am absolutely 100% sure she has no idea what it means. Yeah, I mean, think about where we are right now in America, like, right, that is sort of this, like, cultural Marxist, everything that is from yesterday is wrong and needs to be torn down, everything about America is wrong, we gotta get rid of Christopher Columbus, Dr. Seuss is racist. I love the touch of culture war issues. You know how distracted conservatives get on those, but once again, Candace doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Cultural Marxism is a far-right anti-Semitic conspiracy theory which claims Western Marxism as the basis of continuing academic and intellectual efforts to subvert Western culture. The conspiracists claim that an elite of Marxist theorists and Frankfurt School intellectuals are subverting Western society with a culture war that undermines the Christian values of traditionalist conservatism, and promotes the cultural liberal values of the 1960s counterculture and multiculturalism, progressive politics, and political correctness, misrepresented as identity politics created by critical theory. Okay, so this is essentially cultural Bolshevism. What is that, you may ask? Cultural Bolshevism, sometimes referred to specifically as art Bolshevism, music Bolshevism, or sexual Bolshevism, was a term widely used by Nazi German-sponsored critics to denounce modernist and progressive movements in the culture. This first became an issue during the 1920s in Wilmer, Germany, when German artists such as Max Ernst and Max Beckmann were denounced by Adolf Hitler, the Nazi Party, and other German nationalists as cultural Bolsheviks. Nazi claims about attacks on conception of family, identity, music, arts, and intellectual life were generally referred to as cultural Bolshevism. The Bolsheviks being the Marxist revolutionary movement in Russia. Cultural Marxism is a contemporary variant of the term, which is used to refer to far-right anti-Semitic cultural Marxism conspiracy theory. This variant of the term was used by far-right terrorist Anders Breckvik in the introductionary chapter of his manifesto. So that pretty much explains what cultural Marxism or cultural Bolshevism is. And of course Matt Walsh 
and Tucker Carlson were not in agreement. You know, I'm beginning to notice a trend. When Candace was spewing her ignorance on Fox News from Massa Tucker Carlson, he was laughing and nodding in agreement. It's almost like they just assume everything she says is what they want to hear. You know, because she's been paid well. Another explanation would be that maybe they're racist. And you know what? I'm not that one of those lefties that calls every conservative racist because not all conservatives are racist. In fact, some white liberals are way more racist than the typical alt writer. But um, anyways, let's just assume that Candace actually knows what cultural Marxism is. If that's the case, then her rhetoric is extremely concerning. Especially since Candace has been noted in the past to downplay Hitler and the Nazi regime in Germany. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. Um, so in thinking about how we could go bad down the line, I don't really... I don't really have an issue with nationalism. I really don't. I think that it's okay. It's important to retain your, your country's identity and to make sure um, that what's happening here, which I think is incredibly worrisome in terms of the, just the, the decrease in the birth rate that we're seeing um, in the UK, is what you kind of want to avoid. So I'm not, I don't have anything problem. I have no problems with nationalism. It's globalism that I try to avoid. You heard it straight from the horse's mouth, folks. And before you accuse me of taking Candy Girl <laughs> here out of context, I have put a full link in the description below to the full unedited clip. <laughs> so there you have it. Candace Owens, or Candy Girl, doesn't know what Marxism is. And I have proven it in this video. But um, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you y'all think in the comment section below. For those of you individuals with the IQ of a dead goldfish, oh, I'm of course referring to those of you that support Candy Girl, you'll get over the butt hurt that these facts and endless receipts may have caused. Bye.